Welcome back to Unicorn Dress Designs. My name is Sammy and if you are new here, we do DIYs with signs and there's always tons of laughter. So if that's something you think you'd be into, then make sure you stick around, watch the DIYs and make sure to like and subscribe. All right, let's go ahead and get into it. For our first one, we are going to take this little piggy from Hobby Lobby. It was, it's in their like a uh, spring brand collection, you know, the green tag says spring on it. Anywho, this was $9.99, 40% off. One side of the pig is smooth and then the opposite side is like a planked rough wood. So I decided to go with the smooth side and I am using my puff paint in silver. You can use any color, but I will say if you're planning on painting over it with white, it's best to use a lighter color. And keep in mind too, you can do any design you want. I'm just doing individual swirls. You could do lines, you could do polka dots. I mean, you do you boo, okay? So we're gonna go ahead and set that aside and we are going to let it dry. It, it's usually pretty quick. Then taking plaster and a chip brush, I'm gonna now go over all of that design. I am not necessarily trying to get like a nice clean paint job out of it. I'm okay with a little bit of the wood showing. My goal is just to cover the silver on the puff paint. Um, originally I wasn't going to paint like the edges and the back, but I got a little on there. So I ended up just getting my brush and hitting the sides with my paintbrush. And then I go over the back of it and hit the, the back as well. So you can see this could be a reversible sign voila now taking still gray by waverly again another chip brush i am going in with the lightest amount possible i'm just rubbing my brush on there and you can see how it pops up all those details i was inspired because at hobby lobby they have a bunch of uh bunnies right now in like a galvanized metal that look exactly like this and you guys all you gotta do is take off your painter's tape and you got yourselves a new little piggy from Hobby Lobby. And the best thing about this is too, it's like, ooh, if you want like this little pretty pig, then this side, or you could turn it around and it's nice and it's rustic. So, hey. All right, you guys. So in all honesty, I'm recording this before I do the DIYs. And to be honest, I don't know what I'm doing because I don't know what you guys want to see. Um, I'm doing spring, but then the videos don't do well. Then I'm thinking about doing farmhouse, but then I'm like, are people still into farmhouse? So you know what, I'm gonna do whatever I'm inspired by or whatever makes my heart super happy. And I'm just hoping that you guys like it and enjoy it. So I hope you like the first DIY and I hope you like the remaining three DIYs that I'm gonna bring to the table today. Make sure you drop down in the comments, maybe like what you're looking for or what's inspiring you right now uh, so I could get a better idea of that. And you guys know the drill. If you're digging me, if you're digging the DIYs, if you are digging this channel, if you are digging Baby M, then make sure you like, make sure you subscribe. And then you guys, check down below. I recently did an Amazon Live where I go over my most used craft items that I get from Amazon. Um, so definitely check that out in the description box down below. And you guys, with that said, let's go ahead and get back into the rest of these three surprise DIYs. This next one, so this was a four pack piece of wood. It was $12.99, 40% off. It came in this black color and like a sandstone color. I am pushing a sawtooth hanger just right on the back of it on the top. You guys, I think these are 25, 24 inches long and like five and a half inches wide. So these are really a great buy. Uh, next, I take these um, wood pieces from Dollar Tree. I'm gonna paint all of them in plaster. Then I'm gonna take my stencil. This is also from Dollar Tree. Rich Black by Folk Art, my stencil brush from Dollar Tree. And I am gonna go ahead and pounce that. I'm not trying to get like a super clean look on this. If it's speckled, I'm okay with that. Um, and then I do make sure that as I'm stenciling, when I'm done, I like to hit it with the heat gun 
just for like a, a couple seconds so that when I remove the stencil, I don't have an issue with it smearing the paint. So you can see I picked that up, gorgeous. Now the farm animals at Hobby Lobby, only 39 cents each. They were down, 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 so I almost missed them, but I think a really great buy if you're into farmhouse decor to have these on hand, I mean, for 39 cents, you can't beat it. So I'm just taking a baby wipe, we're taking our antique wax, and then I am just going to do all of them this stain color. Now we're gonna take those farm animals, oh, farm animals, and we're gonna hot glue them right to the middle. Look at how good that looks. Oh my gosh, this stencil like just takes it to another level for sure. So after we're done with that, I go ahead and measure where I want them. I use my ruler to help me keep a straight line and my measuring mat, and I'm just gonna put those on. Now for me, I feel like this entire video, I'm like, you know, simple's all we need. Like it stands out, it's gorgeous. So I didn't wanna go overboard with like greenery and twine and all that. I just love the way it looks. Sorry if you hear Momo in the background, how it is. And my camera's brighter. The wood's actually like really black, but look at how the farm animals pop against that beautiful Dollar Tree stencil. I It just elevates it. I love this piece so much. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments. All right, for this, we're taking these stencils from Hobby Lobby. You get two for $2.99. I think that's a steal for these farmhouse stencils. Then I'm gonna take the mason jar. This is from Dollar General. I didn't wanna mess with tearing the paper off of it, so we'll end up covering that. But I am going to use the back side of this mason jar. I took the silver top off the front so that we can use it on the back. And then I am going to use a uh, still by Waverly. We're gonna put two coats on this. Then we're gonna take my favorite mix to make like a faux rust look, which is antique wax and a smidge of pumpkin by Waverly. I take my chip brush and then I start pouncing it around the edges a little heavier on those bottom edges there. And I really, really love this like faux rust look on here. Definitely changes the whole look of the mason jar. All right, so now we're taking one of our stencils. You could cut this in half, but I didn't feel the need to, but I just use painter's tape to hold it in place. Taking again that Dollar Tree stencil brush, rich black by folk art, and we are gonna cover this up. Now again, I'm okay if it's not like completely covered. Uh, I want it to look a little bit more worn. So you guys, after that's done, again, I kind of heat it with our heat it up with my heat gun. Then we take this off. Oh, look at how cute. I love this. And you guys can use like these pieces separately. So like you could use just the cow on something or just the lettering on the bottom. That's what's really great about these stencils. I mean, $1.50 each, I'll take it. So um, then I take Mod Podge. I just put it on the, the metal part because it tends to flake. So do that, apply it back to the top. And the screws went really like easily back into this material. I take some twine, wrap that around the bottom, tie it off to the right side I'm then going to take some of this cardstock. I made one of these tags last in last week's video, so I'll attach that. Um, but I just hand write it, hit it with some antique wax, crumble it up, make it look old. It says handmade or homemade. So I attach that to the twine, put a little piece of greenery in there, and we definitely took these Hobby Lobby stencils and turn them into something super fun. I love the rest on the side of this. Even like the homemade tag is super cute. But I mean, you guys, for $2.99 for two stencils, you can't beat it. All right, so now I'm gonna take this cutting board and we are going to take the candlestick holders from Hobby Lobby, which were $4.99. Uh, unfortunately, they weren't 40% off, but I loved the look of them. So, with this cutting board, and by the way, I got this cutting board for 75 cents at a garage sale. 
I am taking my Crackle Medium. This one is specifically meant for chalk paint. Uh, if you go down to my description box and watch my most recent Amazon Live, I talk more about the different Crackle Mediums that are out there. So I'm taking my chip brush. I'm trying really hard not to go back and forth with my strokes. I set that to the side, let it dry. Then I go ahead and I paint my feet. Now I did try putting the crackle medium on the feet. However, this wood kind of just like soaked it up. So it didn't really do much to these feet uh, or candlesticks, I should say. All right, but you will see right here, we take our plaster by Waverly and I am trying my best to only do one stroke of the paint. I don't want to overlap and go like back and forth like you usually would because then you're gonna ruin the crackle effect on here. So I hit the sides. I do paint the bottom, but I don't put any crackle under there. And sorry about the lighting, but I wanted to show you, see all of that beautiful crackle. It happens right away. Now I'm going to take these, the candlesticks. However, I'm going to use the bottom and attach that to our cutting board. The reason I chose to do this was so that I can shoot nails through the top. If we were to have used the top of the candlesticks, it would only be held there by like hot glue or wood glue, which is fine if you're using it for yourself. But I was, I'm not sure if I want to put it in the booth and I would hate for somebody to buy this, accidentally drop it and like the feet pop off. So I chose to turn them around and do them this way. And then you guys, um, what do I do next? Oh yeah, I, I just put the nails through. I put the little leather strap that it came with back on and that's it. Again, simplicity at its best. I didn't want to put any kind of transfer on here. No stencil. I just loved how beautiful the crackle looked. I loved these feet on here. Look how gorgeous those are. I love them. All right. So this one. So this actually the tag said paddle board. I saw it and thought, cutting board. <laughs> uh, this one was $8.99, which is kind of crazy when you think about the four pack of wood I bought for $12.99, but it was 40% off again. So I'm taking our antique wax baby wipe. We're going, Ooh, look at how beautiful that green looks. I am going to go ahead and put that on the front, the back, the sides. I love using this technique because it helps the wax dry a lot faster because I'm using a water-based wipe. So after we let that dry, you guys, this one's gonna be so easy. I take these wide mouth mason jar lids and I'm going to drill just one hole on the side of them. I'm gonna use three total for this project. Now you can paint these to be black. You can use the gold lids. I mean, possibilities are absolutely endless, but I knew right away I needed to do this with this long paddle board cutting board. So now you can see I'm holding it to the side. I'm going to use my block of wood because I want to make sure that it's flat on the bottom and not like all wonky and angled. So again, I'm going to show you, I am going to, oh, how to help Everly with a toy. I'm using this planter as kind of like a guide with how far I want to go down with each lid. And again, I'm going to take that block, put it on the back. So I make sure that it's nice and flat. And then I just put a screw right through. Do the same thing for the third one. And you guys, I don't know why. I was telling my husband, I was like, I don't know why, but I really love how this turned out. And I, I don't know. What do you guys think about it? Like, is it just me? Am I being quirky? Like, I love this. I even love it with just these little succulents on them. So you guys, thank you so much for watching this Hobby Lobby DIY video. I really enjoyed doing it. I really loved the simplicity. I also want to say thank you for all the love and support on my last video. I appreciate you all so very much. I hope you have a good weekend and I will be back here on Tuesday with a collaboration with one of my dear friends. We filmed one video. I'm in the same shirt and we're doing a second video. So there's that. But look at how cute this shirt looks on my belly bump. Hold on. I gotta try to link it. I might be like, oh, full center. Sorry, I'm sitting on the couch.
you guys saw Tuesday's video. <laughs> I'm still here. Oh, look at this. Look at how cute. It's just like popping out. How funny. Oh, you guys. Uh, so, real talk. We spent all weekend packing up stuff to bring in the booth because those of you that know I had a website when I got pregnant I was so sick I just I could not handle posting pictures doing thrift hauls doing like shipping all that stuff so I had to stop well I still had all of the stuff that I had bought for the website so that's been downstairs in my basement. So we decided we're gonna pack everything up. We had a huge, we have a huge hutch, we did, down in the basement from our house, our apartment in Long Beach that we brought here. That's just sitting down there. Uh, so we moved everything on Sunday. We spent four hours there. Y'all, no joke, that was the most I've moved around my entire pregnancy. And when we got home, my back was done. Like I could hardly walk. My sciatica was so bad. Luckily, my girlfriend slash chiropractor, Jordan, she was like, pick up your, the kids from school. Come see me. I'll fit you in. And oh my gosh, what a lifesaver. Like complete difference after getting adjusted. And I was just, oh my gosh, I was in so much pain. So I want to just put out a warning, okay, you guys? Please give me some grace as I go through this pregnancy. I'm gonna have some good days, some bad days. Um, I might, too, be recycling content. And in that, I mean, like, if I have older videos, maybe that got like 2,000 views when I first started, I might try to mix those up into videos um, just so I'm still putting out content and staying relevant. And because, you know, I have new subscribers that may have not seen it. You may have not, and you probably have been, you know, an OG forever. So I might be doing that as it, it gets closer and closer. Okay. So just give me some grace. Cause I know people will be calling me out for that, but and sorry, this wasn't really like any bloopers. It was just kind of like, Hey, this is what's going on kind of thing. <gasps> I'm thinking about bringing my other channel back, the Shop with Sammy, but it's not going to be Shop with Sammy. It's going to be like at home, like Sammy Veltry at home and then just do short little vlogging clips, kind of like what we're doing now, you know, but, it, you know, because I'm like, I need to show you guys the new carpet. <gasps> okay, okay, <laughs> okay, bye.